once the camp was done, once the conference was over, once the experience that I had in worship was done and I went home, I felt empty inside. You see, I experienced God when the band and the worship and everything was here. But then when I went back to my church, I went back to one person playing on the guitar, sometimes off key. I went back to a few people in our service. Songs are different. The environment is different. And so I felt discouraged. I felt like after having that experience and going back, you felt, I felt deflated. But what God wants us to receive today, what God wants to pour into us today is an overflow. So that even after this moment is done, even after camp is done, that experience will go beyond this week. Oh, come on, it will go beyond this week that there'll be such an overflow of the Spirit of God, an overflow of the power of God, that when you go back to your churches, you'll take back what you received here this week, and there'll be an overflow in your church, an overflow in your youth ministry, an overflow wherever you go. It won't just be a one-time experience. It won't just be a footnote in, in, in your life, but it will be an encounter, a mark that set that says, from this point forward, my life was never the same. From this point forward, my church was never the same. From this point forward, my youth ministry was never the same. But God is going to give an overflow tonight. Oh, hallelujah. An overflow, an overflow, an overflow that's going to pour out into your church, that's going to pour out into your youth ministry. He wants to give an overflow. He wants you to receive an overflow tonight. I want you to know that the enemy is a liar. He is a liar. He may try and tell you that this is just a one-time thing. He may try and tell you that you can only experience him in this way. But I'm letting you know that the spirit of God is living and real. And he wants to overflow in your life, overflow in your spirit, that wherever you go, you will experience his presence. Not just that camp. Not just at a youth conference, but it will go wherever you go. He will follow you. He will be with you. You will experience the overflow, the anointing, the flow of God's Holy Spirit wherever you go. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, we talked about dropping the weight, releasing some things. We talked about pressing in. But tonight, the Holy Spirit has led me to say that tonight you've got to receive the overflow. You've got to receive the overflow. You've got to receive such a, so much of his power, so much of his anointing that you can't help but spill it over. You'll come, you'll go, oh, hallelujah. You'll come to a sister in your church who has never received the Holy Spirit. She's bitter. She's grumpy. She has always talked about you. But the minute you step next to her, hallelujah, she'll feel the overflow. I want his spirit to be so well in you, so deep in you that when you go back home you can't help but let it spill over. So I want to talk about the overflow tonight. I want you to understand that the overflow is bigger than a song. It's bigger than a melody. Even when you're in a moment of silence, the spirit of the living God can speak to you and move in you and do things that you never knew he would do. He wants you to receive the overflow. Oh come on, give him a praise right now. Give him a praise right now. Give him a praise right now. Oh, come on. He wants you to receive it. In every aspect of your life, the overflow is there for you. He wants you to receive the overflow. And so the scripture I have for you tonight is John chapter 7. And I'm reading from verse 37 to 44. And it says, on the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood in a loud voice and said, let anyone who is thirsty... Come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture says, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Oh, come on, give them a praise for that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 39 continues. By this he meant the Spirit, talking about the Holy Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. 
On hearing these words, some of the people said, surely this is the man, the prophet. Others said he is the Messiah. Still others asked, how could the Messiah come from Galilee? Does not the scripture say that the Messiah will come from David's descendants and from Bethlehem, the town where David lived? Thus said the people, they were divided because of Jesus. Some wanted to seize him, others wanted to lay, but no one laid a hand on him. You see, God wants us to have a life of abundance, a life full of overflow. He desires us to live in his abundance, to never be in need, to never be lacking, to never be in want. This is why David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He never wants us to lack. He never wants us to be in need. And so David realized that God was a good shepherd. He realized that God was a good, good father. And he realized that God would never withhold anything that, we, that is good for us to receive. This is why Jesus, when speaking to the other people in Luke 11, verse 13, said, If ye then, being evil, talking about earthly fathers, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall the heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? God's heart and desire is to not withhold anything good from us. In that verse in particular, it's talking about the Holy Spirit. In other words, God wants you to receive the Holy Spirit because as his children, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. We need him. But the scripture indicates in the text that we have to ask for him. We have to seek for him. We have to tarry for the Holy Spirit. I just want to interject for a moment and be clear that God has one of the greatest gifts for this world that he wants us all to receive, every single one. He wants us all to receive this gift. This gift cannot be contained in a box. This gift, it comes with power. This gift, it comes with healing. This gift comes with deliverance. This, oh, hallelujah, this gift comes with an anointing. I'm talking about the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's what leads you. It's what directs you. It's what shows you where to go. He wants us to be filled with this Holy Spirit. He wants us to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. There's been times in my life where the Holy Spirit preserved my life. When I was in college, oftentimes I would come back almost every weekend because I want to participate in youth group and the different things we had going on. And I remember one weekend in particular, I was at school getting ready, packing my bag, ready to go home. And for some reason, I felt like I should just stay at school this weekend. I didn't know why. I didn't understand why. But for some reason, I felt like I should stay at school. I actually really wanted to go home that weekend because there was a ton of stuff that we were doing. There was a dance practice going on. We were preparing for a big event. And I was like, I need to go home. But for some reason, I felt like I needed to stay at school. You see, I grew up in a pretty rough neighborhood. And the weekend that I stayed at school, I heard a few days later that there were gunshots outside of our house. And I found out when I went home the next weekend that there were bullet holes in my room coming from the wall and in my bed. Where I would have been sleeping that weekend, the Holy Spirit preserved my life. The Holy Spirit protected my life. The Holy Spirit covered my life. You've got to understand, when you have the overflow, when you have the Holy Spirit, you will be preserved. Your life will be protected. He will cover you. It won't make sense, but he will protect you. He'll tell you things. It won't make sense. God, why do you want me to do this? He is covering. He is protecting. He is making sure that the purpose that you have will be fulfilled. He's preserving our lives. The Holy Spirit protected me. The Holy Spirit covered me. And I know if I went home that weekend, it might have been the last time I went home. But thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank God. Oh, come on. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the Holy Spirit, the one that preserves, the one that protects, the one that keeps. So oh, hallelujah. I'm here today because my life was preserved by the Holy Spirit. I was protected by the overflow. This is why it's critical that we take this overflow with us. That we don't just leave it here. We don't just leave it as an experience here. But we take the spirit of the living God with us. Or where it's overflowing wherever we go. We take the spirit of God with us. Oh, hallelujah. Sometimes it may seem small. 
It may not make sense, but listen to the will. Listen to the words. Listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying in your life. He will preserve you. He will protect you. He is a comforter. He is a healer. He is one that can help you in any situation. We need the overflow of the Holy Spirit. When we look at the main text, we find Jesus doing something that initially does not make sense. So in John chapter 7, verse 37, it says, On the last day, the greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Now imagine, this is a feast where everyone is celebrating. This happens every year. And imagine, Jesus stands up with a loud voice. Let anyone who thirsts come to me and drink. Just imagine that. We're here, we're having fun, and someone just says, let anyone who thirsts come to me and drink. You would think that that guy was crazy. What is wrong with this guy? What is he doing? We're here celebrating. We're here celebrating. And and what's funny is the Jewish people were celebrating the coming of the Messiah, the coming of their salvation. They were celebrating that thing. And the crazy guy that they were looking at in the corner that they were saying, what is wrong with that guy, was the very person that they were celebrating. But they did not recognize it because they had not yet received the overflow. They thought he was a crazy man. The scripture says in verse 38, Jesus then goes on to say, whoever believes in me, rivers of living water shall flow from within them. So not only is he crazy and yelling these things, but now he's telling them that rivers of living water will flow from their belly. Rivers of living water will flow from their belly. And so they don't understand it. They're looking at this man like he's crazy. It didn't make sense at the time. But what Jesus was referring to was what was to come. He was referring to the gift of the Holy Spirit. He was referring to something that would overflow in your life. And anyone who believes, they would receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. He was talking about the overflow of the Holy Spirit. This was something that they were to receive. You see, the overflow that Jesus was talking about was something that every person needed. It was a gift that God had for them, but they had to receive it. This is a time and a moment where God is saying, even if you've received the Holy Spirit, I want you to have more of my spirit. Even if you've received me already, there is more that I have for you. There's more of the overflow that I have for you. There's more power that I have for you. Even if you have received it, I want the overflow to flow in every part of your life. I want the overflow to flow in your family. I want the overflow to flow in your church. I want the overflow to flow in your community and every single part of your life, who you talk to, who you walk with, who you, who you meet with every single day, I want the overflow to flow in every part of your life. God is saying, I want you to receive the overflow today. I want you to receive the overflow that I have for you today. You see, one of the things that we have to understand about the overflow is it fulfills a thirst that we never knew we had. It is meant to fulfill a thirst. Whether you realize it or not, the overflow is something that we've all been longing for. It's a thirst that money can't quench. It's a thirst that success can't quench. It's a thirst that friends can't quench. It's a thirst that fame can't quench. It's a thirst that good times and good vibes can't quench. It's a thirst that only can be filled by the Holy Spirit. It can only be filled by the Spirit of the living God. It's a thirst that only the Holy Spirit can fill. Often we don't realize we have this thirst until it is quenched. This was true about a woman at the well. In fact, I want you to turn with me. With I want you to go through this story with me. In John chapter 4, I want you to understand the story about this woman who did not understand she had a thirst until it was filled. Turn with me in your Bibles to John chapter 4, reading from verse 7 to 10. And I, really, I want you to read this with me. So take your Bibles out, take your phones out. I want to see you reading this scripture because I want you to understand what the Spirit of God is trying to tell you tonight. And so the word of the Lord says, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. 
The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you know the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. This woman had an immediate need. A thirst needed to be quenched. She thought she was fulfilling a physical need. She was by the well. She thought it was a physical need. But Jesus was introducing her and making her understand that there was a deeper thing that she needed. There was a deeper thirst that she needed that she did not know she was longing for. She did not know she was thirsting for until she received it. He said, I want to give you living water. Water that you will never thirst again. She did not understand the need. In fact, what I love about the story is the Samaritans were considered outcasts. They were outcasts to society. Samaritans were looked down upon. Jewish people would not be caught dead speaking to a Samaritan person. This is why when Jesus was speaking to her, she was astonished. She was like, do you know who I am? I'm a Samaritan. You're a Jew. You should not be speaking to me. She was an outcast in society. But Jesus saw that she had a greater need. You see, Jesus saw beyond her status in society. He saw beyond how the world looked at her. He saw beyond what the world saw. Oh, hallelujah. You got to understand this. Oh, hallelujah. Whether you live in the suburbs or in the hood, God wants you to receive the overflow. Whether you grew with a silver spoon in your mouth or you grew on the outskirts of society, God wants you to receive the overflow. No matter what place you find yourself in life, God wants you to receive the overflow. He wants you to receive the overflow. He wants you to receive the overflow. Oh, pastor, I didn't grow up with my parents. I grew up with one parent. I grew up with no parent. It doesn't matter. He wants you to receive the overflow. No matter where you find yourself in life, he is saying the overflow is for you. The Holy Spirit is for you. The power is for you. The anointing is for you. The call is for you. He wants you to receive the overflow. It's for you. You may see the counselors, the staffers, and you may think that our life is all put together. We dress well. We know how to say the right things. We know how to do the right things. But if you really knew what we had gone through, if you really knew the struggles that we had to deal with, if you re- see, we, if we were to be honest with you, our life was not always perfect. Our life was not always put together. We were not always in the best environments. We were not like who you see today. We had some trials. We had some struggles. We had some difficult things that we had to deal with. But what we had was we had moments where the spirit of the living God, the overflow that we received, transformed our lives. It turned us around. When we had anger inside, he gave us peace and joy. When we had hatred inside, he gave us love. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. There was an overflow that we received that transformed our lives. We would have been messed up without him. We would have been lost without the Holy Spirit. We would have been, oh hallelujah, lost our way in our mind. But the spirit of the living God moved in our lives and blessed us and touched us and made us who we are today. It was the overflow. Oh hallelujah. It was the overflow. He saw us in our vulnerable states. He saw us in our low moments. He saw us in our most difficult moments. And that overflow, that comforter came and rescued us, came and built us up, came and transformed our heart and mind, came and made us new creatures, a new creation. It was the overflow. It was the overflow that was in our lives. And so now we can testify today that I'm not who I used to be. I'm not who I used to be, but I'm changed. I'm born again. I'm renewed because of the overflow of the Holy Spirit. Come on, give him a praise right now. If you know that you're not who you used to be, but the spirit of the living God changed you, transformed you, turned your life around, and brought you on a new path, it's the overflow. Some of us would have been bitter, but it's the overflow. Some of us would have been angry, but it's the overflow. Some of us would have been in places of deep depression, but it was the overflow. God wants you to receive the overflow tonight. He wants you to receive the overflow. 
He wants you when you have sleepless nights and no one else is around and you're lonely that the overflow, the comfort of the Holy Spirit will be with you. You might not have a song to play at that moment. You might not have someone to pray to at or call at that moment. But you can pray to the living God and he can give you the overflow. He can give you the comforter and he can meet you right where you are and wrap his loving arms around you and let you know that you're safe and that you have someone that's for you and pushing you forward. You see, God is saying there is a well inside of you that won't one dry. There's a living water that can quench your thirst. Oh, hallelujah. It comes from deep within. He's saying it's my spirit. I want to place my spirit inside of you that it will be a river of living water. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. It'll flow and flow and flow. You can't even contain it. You know, the power of the Holy Spirit will be so powerful. It's like a mighty rushing river, a mighty rushing wind. It'll contact everyone who you see. And will move in their lives. I'm not talking about a puddle. I'm not talking about a trickle of water. I'm talking about a river. I'm talking about what they would use in, in places like New Orleans where they would have dams to hold back this body of water because it's so massive. It's so big. It's so powerful. I'm talking about rivers of living water flowing in your life, flowing in your church, flowing in your youth group. Rivers of living water. It's not a trickle. Not a trickle of water. It's a river. He wants it to flow from your belly. Your belly. God placed that power inside of you. He placed that call inside of you. He placed his spirit inside of you that it would overflow in every part of your life. You see, we've got to stop searching for what God has already placed in you. Stop searching the world for what God has already placed in you. We search the world for the answers that God has already placed in you. We search the world to try and find our way. God has already placed it in you. The Holy Spirit leads you. He guides you. He directs you. He shows you what to do and how to do it. He has placed it already in you. It's in your belly. He placed the overflow in you. You see, many times we can't receive the overflow because of our unbelief. Our unbelief often blocks the overflow that God has for us. If we go back to the main text, we see that Jesus is yelling at a crowd about receiving the overflow. And as he is letting them know that they can receive the Holy Spirit and receive the overflow, we see that some are listening and don't believe. If we go back to the text, John chapter 7, verses 40 to 43, it says, On hearing his words, some of the people said, Surely this man is the prophet. Others said he is the Messiah. Still others ask, how can the Messiah come from Galilee? Does not the scripture say that the Messiah will come from David's descendants and from Bethlehem, the town where David lived? Thus the people were divided because of Jesus. You see, in hearing Jesus speak about the living water, speaking about the overflow, speaking about the Holy Spirit, they were divided about his statement. Some were so focused on his upbringing. Some were so focused on the fact that he should come from the line of David. They were so focused on that that they did not receive the overflow. They did not receive what the Lord had for them because of their disbelief, because of their unbelief. This tells me that if we do not believe, we can block the overflow that's supposed to come in our lives. We can block the overflow. If you don't believe that the Holy Spirit can work in your life, you can block his work in your life. If you don't believe the Holy Spirit can heal you, you can block the work that he wants to do to heal you. Our unbelief can block the work of the Holy Spirit. If you're not open to the works of the Holy Spirit, you'll miss the move of the Holy Spirit. There are segments of believers who don't even believe the Holy Spirit moves today. I want you to, I want you to know that that's a lie from the pit of hell. The Holy Spirit is still active. He's still alive and he's still moving amongst the believers, amongst the church. The Holy Spirit is still moving today. He's still moving today. And it's sad because just like the woman at the well, they don't know what they're missing. You see, this is the kind of thirst that you don't know it's missing until you receive it. You don't know that you've lacked it and that you needed it until you receive it. And God is saying, I want you to receive what's been missing. I want you to receive an overflow in your life. Oh, hallelujah. You didn't know you missed it until you needed it. And now that you've received it, you'll say, God, I see I needed this all along. Hallelujah. To 
tonight, many of you may be saved. Many of you have already surrendered your life to the Lord. But the void that you're feeling is the filling of the Holy Spirit. The gap that you're feeling is the filling of the Holy Spirit. If you've never been filled by the Spirit of the living God, he wants to fill you tonight. If you've never received the Holy Spirit, he wants you to receive it tonight. God wants you to have an overflow. Oh, hallelujah. He wants you to have an overflow. If you have not been saved, he wants you to receive salvation and receive his overflow tonight. His overflow of forgiveness. His overflow of love. He wants you to receive the overflow tonight. He wants you to feel his mighty rushing wind. Move throughout your place. Move throughout this place. Move throughout your body. Move throughout your life. He wants you to receive the overflow tonight. I want to be clear about this. You see, this overflow that God wants you to receive, he doesn't just want you to receive it for this moment. He wants this overflow to be so massive that even as you leave this campground, you can't help but overflow. I'm talking about on the bus ride, on the car ride home. You're worshiping. You're singing praises. You're speaking in tongues. You're healing. You're delivering. You're doing things beyond this service. I'm not talking about a temporary moment. I'm talking about an overflow. Oh, hallelujah. I remember back when we went to one of our first camps and we were dealing with wickers and witches on the same campground and the spirit of the living God moved in that house and we received the Holy Spirit. That was the first time I received the Holy Spirit. It was so powerful that on the car ride home, we went to, we stopped at a restaurant. We couldn't help but worship and praise God and speak in tongues and minister to the waiter because the power of the living God was flowing so much in us. It was bubbling up so much in us. We couldn't help but witness. We couldn't help but share it. I want you to receive that kind of overflow that goes beyond this moment and extends for weeks, months, years. I want you to receive that kind of overflow. That you will be an agent of change wherever you go. You see, God wants you to receive that overflow tonight. Jesus made it clear that our unbelief can block the overflow. There's a story where Jesus goes back to his hometown. And only a few people receive healing. Now Jesus, wherever he went, performed miracles, he healed, he delivered, he set people free. But in his hometown, they could not receive. The scripture says that they were unable to receive it because of their unbelief. God is saying, you've got to believe in the overflow. You've got to believe that I can work in your life. You've got to believe that I can do some great things in your life. You've got to believe that I want the good for you and that when you receive my Holy Spirit, when you receive the overflow, that whatever you need, whatever you lack, you will receive. These people received nothing. They lost the blessing that they needed. They lost the healing that they needed. They lost the deliverance that they needed because they did not believe. They did not believe. God is saying, don't search the world for answers. You need healing, come to me. You need deliverance, come to me. Don't put me in a box. Don't limit me. I am God, oh hallelujah. I'm the one that part of the Red Seas. I put kings in power and remove them. I am the living God. I can give you an overflow from your belly that can do whatever you need. Healing, deliverance, breakthrough. I can give you the overflow. You don't got to look anywhere else. You don't got to look to fortune tellers for your future. You don't got to look to stones for your healing. Look to the son of the living God. Look to the Holy Spirit that he has placed inside of you. He has placed it in you so that you can overflow with that power. Don't put me in a box. Don't limit me. But you've got to believe. You've got to believe. You see, the reason why God wants you to receive the overflow, the reason why God wants the overflow to pour in your life is because it's not just for you, but it's to pour out. It's an overflow. So just like a glass would tip and overflow, it's going to overflow and touch everyone else, every aspect of your life. Wherever you go, it will overflow and touch others. And so the overflow allows us to be more effective witnesses for him. 
It allows us to be an effective witness. The Holy Spirit guides us, shows us how to talk to people, how to engage with people. Even where fear may come, the Holy Spirit gives us boldness. The Holy Spirit is what we need to be an effective witness for Christ. Oh, come on, give him a praise right now. Hallelujah. You see, God wants us to have such an overflow that when people come into proximity of us, they'll feel the difference. They'll know that something's different about this person. Something's strange about this person. They're not the ordinary person. This is not a normal encounter. There's something different about this person. I don't know why, but I feel love. I don't know why, but I feel grace. I don't know why, but I feel an anointing. I don't even know what that is, but I feel it. That's the kind of overflow he wants you to have. On the bus, people feel it. At school, people feel it. There's something different about this person. They're not like everyone else. There's something different about them. That's the type of overflow that he wants us to receive. That's the type of overflow that he wants us to receive. That wherever we go, I'm reminded of Peter. There was a man that came up to him. And he said, silver and gold have I none, but what I have I will give you. Receive healing in the name of Jesus. What, what he's saying is this, that what you have will be so powerful. When people walk up to you, they'll ask for other things. Oh, I need this. I'm in lack, but I'm saying I don't have the money that you need. I don't have these things that you need, but what I have you need to receive healing, deliverance, freedom. Receive the overflow. Oh, come on, give him a praise right now. Receive the healing, receive the deliverance, receive the overflow that I have for you. The Bible says in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, this is Jesus right before he's ascending into heaven. He says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria and all the ends of the earth. You see, when you receive the Holy Spirit, it's a power to witness. It's a power to, to witness to people who need to receive the love and salvation of the Lord. He gives you the ability to be able to break down barriers. Oh, hallelujah. You can go in gang territories with the wrong colors and see the Spirit of the living God move and touch lives. This is the type of overflow that God wants you to receive. He says in his last days he'll pour out his spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams. This is the overflow that God wants us to receive. God wants to pour out his spirit. God wants to pour out his anointing. God wants to pour out his power over your life. He wants to pour it out. He's saying in these last days I want to pour it out. Even in this scripture where it says that they will prophesy. It's not talking about fortune telling, but it's talking about proclaiming the gospel. That means God wants you to receive the overflow. He wants you to receive his Holy Spirit so you can proclaim the gospel. That's what he wants you to receive. Oh, hallelujah. My grandmother had passed away during COVID. But one of the things that I loved about my grandmother is that she had a presence with her. There was something about her. People would come up to her and ask for prayer. People who did not even believe in prayer. They didn't believe in God. But for some reason they would ask this woman for prayer. There was a difference when she walked around. There was a presence when she walked around. There was something different about this woman. She had 14 kids, 35 grandkids. God knows how many great grandkids. And people would think, oh, maybe it's because she's an elder, an elderly woman, so there's respect. But I believe that there was something different about her. There was a presence about her. There was a presence that went with her wherever she went that made the difference. I remember my cousins, whenever they would come around her, one of my cousins had an earring. He would take it off because he was in fear of how she, what she would think. He'd be, he'd be smoking weed, but whenever he came to the house, he would make sure that he put cologne on and he would st straighten himself up when he would go to see her. There was an aura about her. There was a presence about her. It wasn't because she was old. It was because the spirit of the living God was living in her. And wherever she went, people felt it. Come on, give him a praise right now. Wherever she went, people felt it. They felt it. 
God is saying, that's what I want for you. That's what I want you to receive tonight. I want you to receive that overflow, that wherever you go, people will know that you're different. People will see that you're different. People will say, there's something about that young girl. There's something about that young man. I don't know what it is, but it's something about them. He wants you to receive that overflow tonight. He wants it to overflow in your life. Not just for this moment. Not just when we have youth camp. Not just when there's a youth conference. But every single day of your life, he wants your overflow to just flow out in your life. To flow out in your life. To flow out. Oh, hallelujah. Your overflow can fix damaged families. You can have a broken family. And through your overflow, he can mend what's broken in your family. Oh, come on. Give him a praise right now. Give him a praise right now. You can be the agent of change in your family because of your overflow. He wants you to have an overflow tonight. I'm opening up this altar. I want us all to come to this altar tonight. And the Holy Spirit wants you to receive his overflow. He wants you to receive his power. He wants you to receive his anointing. He wants you to receive it so that you can then go and be a witness for him. And let that overflow spill out in every aspect of your life. As they gather at the altar, counselors, staff members, Please gather around them. If there's any young people who don't know the Lord, I ask that you take this moment to lead them to the Lord, or I can even come and lead them to the Lord. But we want to make sure that every youth has the opportunity to receive the Lord and receive the overflow tonight. We want them to leave tonight with an overflow. We want them to receive the overflow. I want us to lift our hands. Lift our hands up to heaven. And say, Lord, give me the overflow. Oh, come on, say it louder. Lord, Lord give me the overflow. One more time. Lord, Lord give, me the give me the overflow. One more time. Lord, Lord give, me the overflow. give me the overflow. Oh, come on from deep in your gut. Lord, Lord give, me the give me the overflow. Lord, Lord give, me the overflow. give me the overflow. I want you to give him a praise right now and begin to lift up the name of Jesus. Begin to praise him. Begin to bless him. Begin to lift up the name of Jesus as he works and moves, oh hallelujah, move Lord God, move amongst these young people, move in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, move, oh hallelujah, 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 he wants to move right now in your life, he wants to move through you and in you right now, and as the worship team begins to sing, I want you to go into prayer, I want you to begin to pray before the living God. Oh,